Hi, thank you very much uh, to the organizers for having me here at this conference and for giving me the chance to present my work today. My name is Annika Tjuka and I'm from the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History. I will present ongoing work that I'm currently doing on body part extensions. Just to give you an idea of what I will be talking about today, I look at body part extensions that use a body part for an object feature, as in leg of the table, where we use our human leg to refer to the table leg. And there are certain differences across languages. We see that in English we call this part eye of the needle, whereas in German, my native language, we use nade ur, which is the ear of the needle. So that there are certain differences between languages um, and although it's the same object feature, they can use different body part terms. So in the literature we have an English-centric view. This phenomenon is described as not systematic and others say that there seems to be an obvious similarity, so certain um, body part extensions like foot of the mountain or leg of the table should be there across languages. Although this might be true um, for English, we see that certain languages can use body part terms very systematically. The hypothesis of my topic, of my research, is that polysemy is based on a perceived similarity between concepts. And here I talk about concrete objects, a body part and an object feature. And then languages can choose to highlight different dimensions of similarity. In my master thesis, I did a cross-linguistic study of body part extensions to object and landscape terms. And this was the first systematic typological stu study to investigate those body part extensions. My elicitation material consisted of um, pictures and I had a list of 92 body parts which were illustrated in the pictures and I asked my participants whether or not they can use a certain body part or a body part in general for certain object features. I had 13 language speakers participating in my study. They came from um, different language communities. They were all living in Berlin, so it was like an urban fieldwork study. The languages were distributed, or the language families were distributed more or less uh, Eurocentric, but at least I got some languages in Southeast Asia. And the results of my study showed that the expression leg of the table, leg of the chair, and leg of the bed occur throughout the language sample, and that those body part extensions are based on perceptual similarities. I investigated three um, dimensions of similarity, namely shape, spatial alignment, and function. The most interesting result I found in my study was uh, when I showed a certain picture to my participants, some of them used different body parts for the same object feature. So I showed a, a picture of an arrow um, and the tip of the arrow was described as either the nose, the mouth, or the head of the the arrow, uh, which I found intriguing and fascinating that this was even possible. That's why in my current study I, would, I want to look at this phenomenon more broadly with more data to see the patterns that arise throughout different language families. And the aim is, or the goal is, to see certain patterns, um, maybe aerial patterns or language family patterns in those body part extensions. The data I'm using for my study is um, the CLICS database, or is in the CLICS database, which is which consists of almost 3,000 concepts across almost 3,000 languages. And the collectifications here, this term refers to a lexeme having different meanings, so it's a it's an umbrella term for polysemy and homonymy. Looking at the languages or the variety of languages we have in the CLICS database, you see a huge difference to my small language sample in my master thesis. So I have a variety of languages that I can look at and I can look at those um, classifications across languages that are across the globe. The research question 
I will be talking um, to you about today is how many of those classifications between body part and object features can we find in clicks and what variation can be found in different languages concerning which body part is chosen for the same object. And the data I included in the study is a list of 81 body part concepts and 163 object concepts. The object concepts are um, or include items from different categories. So we, I have tools, food, landscape, plants, and furniture. The results show that there are 411 classifications between human body part concepts and objects in the clicks database, which is a lot of um, data that I can work with now. In this graph, we see the number of classifications of body part terms with objects. Here you see that uh, most body part terms are classified with only one object, whereas, um, for example, head classified with more than 20 objects and um, other Body parts that are used in a broad range of objects include skin, eye, and tooth, which are classified with more than uh, 10 objects. The next graph is the mirror image to the pre pre previous graph. Uh, here you see that most objects collect with only one body part term and only a few objects collectify with more than one body part. And those include, for example, egg, which collectifies with 17 body parts, and others include leaf and root, which collectify with more than 10 body part terms. In this um, collection of graphs, you see that these are certain examples that I picked out to show you and illustrate how the data looks like. So we have a collectification with egg, and as I said, 17 body parts are used for this concept and one body part is most prominent. So we have uh, 30 languages which use the body part testicles for the object egg. On the other hand, we have, for example, root, which is the root of the tree. And here vein and blood vessel are the two most frequently collectified body parts uh, with the term with the concept of root and the analogy of the blood vessel in our um, in our body and the roots as the life source for a tree is uh, the function of the blood vessel or the vein to give you an idea of what I will what I'm going to do in the next steps of my study, I will be looking at collectification networks. And the Clicks database is built as a network. As you can see here from this, this example, we have the word circle and then the um, connections of this word, of this concept with other concepts and uh, the thickness of the edges between the no nodes indicate how often this um, concept is collectified with, with the other concepts. So circle and round are more frequently collectified than circle and ring for, on the other hand. The implications of my study are broad. So what I would like to look at is whether or not these body part collectifications or body part extensions to objects will show certain patterns of within language families or across language families. And there is already a study by Jackson et al, which showed that there are differences across language families in the domain of emotions. And uh, I, based on my master thesis, I have the hypothesis that languages might have certain preferences to hide, to highlight certain dimensions of perceptional similarity. So we might get only a a certain range of body part collectifications in a given language family. And this will be uh, one of the things I'm looking at in the future. Thank you very much for listening to my talk and I'm happy to hear your questions.